Well, to talk more about that, I'm joined by William Lawrence. He's a professor of political science and international affairs at George Washington University. Thank you for being with us. And a very uh, fast moving turn of events. Just 24 hours ago, Bouteflika's office said that he'd be staying on until the end of his mandate uh, on the 28th of April. Tonight, though, he's going. Yeah, just an hour ago, I was on your French channel and uh, we hadn't heard that news yet. Uh, and certainly this is uh, very important news. It's very momentous. It's the first demand of the Al Algerian protesters and the regime. It was sort of interesting as I began to talk to more and more of my friends who were in the protests that uh, uh, FLN officials, senior government officials would be talking to senior, uh, you know, the, the deputy prime minister and others, and then they would go out into the protests. So this was the quasi totality of the Algerian population, you know, rising up to say enough is enough. An invalid president, a seriously disabled president needs to go. This is demand one. Demand two is systemic change. And we're not sure yet, uh, you know, what what type of systemic change we're going to see. Well, I'd like to bring in, uh, if I can, uh, Monsif Aid Kassi, our correspondent uh, who is over in Algiers, uh, just to find out what is happening. And Monsef, what is the reaction where you are? Monsef, can you hear me? We seem to be having a little bit of trouble getting hold of our correspondent. Uh, William Lawrence uh, still with us. I believe. William Lawrence, if you're still with yes. us. I am. And uh, will there be celebrations in Algeria tonight? Because for many, Bouteflika was, was just a symbol, really. And the problems yeah. in Algeria go much deeper, don't they? Namely, economic mismanagement, corruption, all of these uh, real systemic problems. There's been a funny cycle in the recent protests is that we'll, we'll have a major concession from the regime, including this type of resignation or major change, and there'll be immediate jubilation that'll last a couple of hours. And then the Algerian protesters will realize that they're kind of being played because they're not getting the systemic change they want. And the regime has come up with another ruse to stay in power. And I don't, I don't think this will be much different. Job, one of the protesters, was get Bouteflika to step down. We had uh, more than six weeks of protests, and they have gotten their first objective. But the systemic change will be much, much harder to realize. And as soon as the protesters figured out, figure out that they need to remain uh, mobilized in order to get that change, um, they're going to be less jubilant. I expect that would be within 24 hours. And in terms of what happens now, um, it will be the president of the Senate uh, who, who takes over. Is that right? He will. He is then compelled to take the country to elections? Absolutely. And this is very constitutional. And it's exactly what the military wanted, because they wanted uh, uh, to follow the Constitution. Now, don't forget, we had to amend the Algerian Constitution twice to even prolong Bouteflika's mandate into a third, fourth, and uh, potentially a fifth term. Uh, and so uh, constitutional rigor is not... Uh, uh, a signature of the Algerian regime. But in this case, the military found it much more useful to follow the constitution rather than some other procedure that would appear much more illegal uh, uh, to, 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 to resolve the problem. The real problem, and it has existed for six years, is the succession issue. In Algeria, you usually have a pre-selection before you have an election of a president, uh, of a future president in the country. And to this day, today, the Algerian pouvoir, the Algerian regime, has still not decided on a successor to Bouteflika. There are active negotiations going on. I've just been reading today all day me emails, WhatsApp messages, things going back and forth uh, between uh, various Algerians about who that successor might be. Uh, uh, but, but there's no consensus yet, and the Algerian regime likes to operate uh, by unanimity. So we usually don't hear from them until they all agree on something. What about the army then? Uh, the, the army, of course, very powerful in Algeria. It clearly played a key role in uh, ending Bouteflika's uh, 20 years in power. Uh, will they continue to have uh, a strong say in politics and will that be a, a cause for concern for, for people in the country? 
Absolutely. They have probably the most important single say, but it's not the, even the majority of the say you know, that needs to happen. Basically, in Algeria, you have a, a, a complex system supporting an oligarchical form of government, where, as you say on France Fiquette, you know, frequently, you've got, you've got military leaders, intelligence leaders, businessmen, uh, other regional power brokers, uh, uh, and, and, all, and retired generals, all sorts of uh, important people who like to operate in a consensus way, where they come to consensus decisions, often, you know, at, at retreats at places like Sidi Faraj, where they'll do something like select the next uh, president they want to win the election, that sort of thing. And the military plays a very important role. What's interesting to me right now is that right now you've had seven rich Algerians prevented from leaving the country, which suggests that we'll have corruption trials. And I'm wondering who's giving those orders. Is it uh, the, the chief of the army, Gade Salah? Is he instructing the intelligence services what to do? Because we have uh, Algerians that have been blocked from leaving the country, which um, suggests that we will not only have an attempt at a transition that's acceptable to the population, but also trials for corruption from leading business leaders who've be benefited from the regime. Now, will this placate the crowds? I don't think so, um, but it's part of the mix of what's coming. And uh, it, it has to be noted, of course, uh, that uh, these protests have been entirely peaceful, unlike uh, elsewhere in the region. Um, this came about by people taking to the streets and engaging in peaceful protests. That is a very positive thing for it's Algeria, a, especially given the country's absolutely, history. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been very uh, wonderful to watch. The civic mindedness of Algerians has been incredible. The way the army and the security services protects the protesters, the way the protesters clean up after themselves. But we shouldn't forget that the Moroccan Arab Spring, the Tunisian Arab Spring, the Egyptian Arab Spring, even the Syrian Arab Spring began this way, began with peaceful protests. And then what we saw were crackdowns. Uh, what the Algerian regime usually does is they use a, co a combination of coercion and co-optation to buy off the threat. So far, we've seen nothing. No coercion, no co-optation, and peaceful protests. But this can't go on forever. And so going forward, it'll be interesting to see if the protesters decide to use more violence and rush the presidential palace, which smaller groups have done, you know, whether the security services react violently. And also, once the um, opposition, which doesn't have a platform, doesn't have a spokesman, starts coming up with leaders and a, and a position about how they want to fill the power vacuum in Algeria right now, it'll be interesting to see what the regime tries to do to co-opt those people. But as of right now, we have peaceful protests and a regime, uh, you know, wondering how they can hang on to power. William Lawrence, great insight.